So this has been roughly a year in the making. This, I'm sure you may remember, roughly a year ago, there was a incident in the North Atlantic Ocean with a company called OceanGate. The OceanGate incident. <laughs> uh, the CEO of uh, OceanGate named Stockton Rush, definitely not a 1880s West American West villain name, decided that he wanted to go visit the Titanic with a bunch of paying tourists. Not bad on its own. The real problem is Mr. Rush. The more I researched, the more I came to this conclusion. And I'm convinced by the end of this presentation, you will agree with me on this. You should never say bad things about the dead. You should only say good. Stockton Rush is dead. Good. I'll make an unfounded claim. How could this man, this titan of industry here, do something so bad? So just how did Ocean Gate end up killing five people? This is an engineering topic, so there will be some technical info. Not too much, I promise. And I'll try to keep it simple when it does come up. And what was a sub made of? He decided to make his sub out of something called unidirectional carbon fiber. And that's pretty much just hair thin strands of carbon fiber that are covered in glue and they're all facing the same way. Uh, normal carbon fiber goes, say, left and right and up and down. That means that whether you stretch it left and right or up and down is strong both ways. The hull, the round bit, was made up of 480 layers of carbon fiber. Half of them were facing up and down and half of them were rolled in a circle. And if you know carbon fiber, they used half pre-prick and half wet wound. Why would they use half and half? Because you get the disadvantages of both. If there's, if, if there's faults on all sides, it evens out. Tyler, did you just say if there's faults on every side, then it evens out? Yeah. Engineering is more of an art than a science, you know? It's not actually that big either. The whole sub could fit five people. It is really cramped on the inside. I, prob I probably wouldn't fit on the inside. I'll be honest. What you need to know, it's basically a cylinder with hemispheres on either end to form to finish off the hull. The main cylinder bit in the middle here is all that black is all carbon fiber. And these two bits on the end are titanium. Yeah, so the viewport actually is interesting. It's seven inches thick, which is by far the thickest of anywhere on the sub. So it's acrylic. Acrylic fails visually roughly three times sooner than it'll fail mechanically. Meaning that if you look at it, if it goes all blurry and fuzzy, that means you're at one third of its failure point. Shame they didn't apply it to the rest of the sub, but you know. How soon does carbon fiber fail visually? How much longer do you have? That becomes a major point later on in the thing, funnily enough. The Titanic is 12,500 feet down. At that point, there is 5,000 PSI of pressure. Uh, the Titanic has a total surface area of 20,300 square inches, which means the total force pushing in on that submarine is 51,000 tons. If you want to know just how much 104 million pounds is, we're going to have to bring out an old friend. <laughs> yes, baby! <laughs> The USS Yorktown, <laughs> fully loaded with planes, fuel, guns, everything, weighs 26,000 tons. That is half the weight of the water on the submarine. Wow, that sure is a lot of pressure, Mr. Rush. Surely you're going to prioritize safety on this highly dangerous mission, right? He said he would use an innovative acoustic listening system to detect when damage on the hull is occurring and to abort before it causes the hull to fail. When you want to stop adding force, you just go up. Less water means less force less likely to break. Obviously worked as intended. This is pick unrelated. There are going to be two graphs on the scene. See if you can find the difference. This is graph number one. You know, you can see a nice, long, straight line, bit of a bump there. You get your nicely named <laughs> ultimate strength, and then at the end you fracture. This is graph number two. What do you see here? <laughs> <laughs> there's, no, there's no curve. There's no, it doesn't have a... Yes. Yes. So these are called stress strain curves, and they are how materials react to being put under force. The one on the top over here is steel, and the one on the bottom is carbon fiber. So this little line here is called the elastic zone. Any damage you do here is reversible. When you take the load off, it'll go back to normal. After this yield strength here, any damage is permanent. When it eventually breaks, they mark it with a red X. Your sub, if you design it, should be within this straight line and must be before the ultimate strength. Because if you pass the ultimate strength, you will suffer a failure. For carbon fiber, it's not quite that easy. <laughs> this whole straight line here is stuff you expect. And then once you get to start's curve, it curves, and look at that, you're done. All I'm hearing is that with his brand new acoustic technology, he probably could have been fine if he had a better sound system. That's no, actually not even because this whole like this whole straight line, there would be no sound. You would only get some when you start getting the curve. Did he know that? You said he's an engineer. Did he know this? Yes. 
Concrete is actually a pretty good example of this. Unreinforced concrete is brittle fracture. Everything collapses all at the same time. There's no warning. Rush, is at, Rush had a pretty interesting safety attitude. So I've collected a series of quotes, some that I made up and some that are real. I'm going to put them on screen and we'll have you in the audience guess which one is real and which one is fake. At some point, safety is just pure waste. I can do this just as safely by breaking the rules. All that can happen is something on the outside can get hurt. We are not getting hurt. We are the safest five people on the planet. <laughs> we have heard the baseless cries of you're going to kill someone way too often. I take this as a serious personal insult. I'd like to be remembered as an innovator. I think it was General MacArthur who said you are remembered for the rules you break. Carbon fiber and titanium? There's a rule you don't do that. Well, I did. I know that our engineering is focused, innovative, of an approach. It flies in the face of orthodoxy, but that's the nature of innovation. I'm tired of industry players who try to use safety as an excuse to stop innovation. You're going to do this thing where in the next slide's going to be like, they're all real. They're all real. Yeah, yeah. You you, you did sniff it out. Uh, they're all real. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Ocean Gate says they bought their carbon fiber from Boeing. Oh, no. Oh. Boeing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is like this is like seeing a cameo you didn't expect. Boeing originally bought the carbon fiber to use in their planes, but because they had manufacturing trouble, it expired. Carbon fiber is much, much stronger in tension than it is in compression. On planes, that's good because in a plane, when that's pressurized, you have more air in trying to force its way out. That means everything stretches and gets put in tension. In a sub, it's the other way around. Everything outside is trying to get in, so it tries to crush you. They put it in an untested, undesigned situation and then chose not to test it again. Like their math should have been correct. Their math, they got the first step correct. They did the math. The math was good. After you build it, you test it to make sure that it's good. What if there was a, what if there was a design problem, which there was? What if it was made badly, which it was? There's a really big issue of something called porosity. That's where you get holes in your carbon fiber places where the epoxy doesn't reach and you get holes left behind and this causes serious issues and then there are ways to get rid of it you can cure it in an autoclave you take it really high temperature and really low pressure this means all the holes get pulled to the surface and they get pulled away and now the holes are gone it's the same same process as using like a vacuum chamber to cure resin they decided i don't want to do that it's too expensive <laughs> so put it in an oven that's another material science problem. That's they made it so hot, it actually became a brittle material. That You remember way back when we had that steel graph that had like all the curves and everything? When By the time they were done, their steel graph would look like carbon fiber. It would be a straight line. So when it got hit by a tank shell, it would just obliterate. It would just shatter and they have a huge hole in it. Carbon fiber does not like water either. Water works its way in and causes the fibers to separate. Do you remember the pore thing from earlier that we just talked about? The more pores there are, the more water can get in. It forms a feedback loop. The bad surface does more water in. More water means more cracks. More cracks mean more water. And you got a big circle that nobody likes because it means you die. This is a problem. Over time, materials lose their strength. Just like if you were at the gym and you maxed out on your first set, the next time you won't be able to lift as much. Carbon fiber fractures uniquely. Because it's a brittle material, that means it's either at full strength or broken and lifts nothing. The sub had been taken on a few practice dives. And what they decided to do was, because some carbon fibers aren't up to the task, they said, we'll take it down. We'll let the weak ones break on purpose, so that the strong ones are left behind. Mm, and then on the nice. real dive, this acoustic monitoring system we talked about before, it will hear those strong ones breaking and say, okay, we should go back now. Each time he went down, more fiber snapped, the load per fiber increased. So he could have been a single-use submarine. They could have, but submarines aren't single use. That's not the point of a submarine. <laughs> By the time of the last fateful dive, there were just so many had broken. There was, there was just not enough left to keep the surviving ones together. So in the end, what happened? The carbon fiber was long and thin, meaning it probably buckled. It means the carbon fiber caved in and it just put a hole in it. And all 5,000 pounds of pressure per square inch came in and flattened everybody. But but then, like, if you blinked, you would have missed it, essentially. Well, yeah. So put it this way. The time from peeling to death was 20 milliseconds. The fastest possible reaction time with computer assistance is 50 milliseconds. And that is as fast as is biologically possible. Less than half the time, they had already been instantaneously pulverized. Uh, Stockton's rough death is unfortunate. But it's a good thing he's not alive to hurt more people. If Vern here was if Vernier was here, he could have tested this. But if you become an engineer in Canada, you get something called the Iron Ring. 
the story is there was a bridge in Quebec that failed because an engineer didn't account for wind properly. So what they did was they took some of the steel from the bridges and made it into rings. So when you graduate, you get a ring and put it on your pinky of your writing hand. So when you write, that ring drags on the paper so you always know it's there and reminds you not to forget what you're doing. And if you mess up, people die. Engineers, if you want to do something funny, do it on paper and leave it on paper. If you want to do something real, make sure you do it properly. What if it's me looking down on me? The world above must also be. This could go on for infinity.